That is Allison Legary that just joined us. She's um, on board this year as our evaluator. Uh, she has been working with us over the past three years. Some of you may have met her, uh, but she has branched out on her own and is um, assembled a team of evaluators that will be working with us. So as um, I've worked with Compass over the last four years, we have um, collected a lot of data and a lot of documentation from all of the schools in both the Southeast region and the Northeast region. Um, before I continue, Todd, can you mute yourself? I'm getting feedback from you. Thank you. Um, so what I'd like to share with you today are some of our findings um, based on our visits to schools and our conversations with principals and teaching teams, um, things that we found in action that we see as promising practices for sustainability in school. So as um, I was preparing this, I thought of four different categories. Um, where we found teachers were telling us that um, they were feeling quite confident in their prospects for sustainability once their formal um, participation with the Perfect Arts Integration Project was over with. So um, one of the first I'll share with you is um, about capable team leadership and formation. I'll share in more detail in just a minute. Um, another piece of this that um, is particularly relevant to you as principals is um, that the teachers are able to have accommodating schedules and classroom geography within the schools. Another piece of this is using Perpich money and other available grant money strategically um, as, the, as your teams are planning units so that they can minimize future costs and um, be able to um, for example, those that um, Justin and Amanda were sharing with you, um, to think about how those units work um, sort of in perpetuity. How, does, how do you fund those units as you move forward? And the fourth I'll be talking about is incorporation into larger school or district-wide district initiatives. So I'll start speaking a little bit more about capable team leadership and formation. So one of the major findings from our work in studying and evaluating the Purpose Arts Integration Project is that very successful teams have what we call an arts integration champion. And what that means to us is that this is a teacher on the team, occasionally a principal who is um, working with the teaching team as well, um, a teacher who already has a passion for the arts. Um, and that results in a very high level of buy-in and a level of enthusiasm that's shared with other teachers on the team. Something that we have found is that arts integration champions are not always arts educators. Um, we know that there is a requirement that every team have a licensed arts educator, but we recognize that um, those classroom teachers who may not be arts teachers have a very rich history in the arts as well and those may be the uh, situated arts champion for the, um, the team as they develop their units. We've also learned a little bit about sustainable organizational configurations. So as we've studied this, we note that teams that um, assemble themselves seem to fare better, meaning um, we've experienced, especially with one particular school, a group of teachers who have worked together for 20 years um, and enjoy collaborating and brought the prospect of participation in the project to their principal and said, we work really well together. We think we'll work really well with the fourth grade team. Um, we would like your support in approaching this project. So in that case, they already had a formal team that they knew would work together. Um, we also have noted that small, stable teams tend to thrive. What we mean by stable is there is little turnover in the um, participating teachers. Um, and in this case, when the teams are stable, the, they can repeat a, and refine a unit from year to year. So um, as Amanda was showing the critical response protocol, each team works with a larger group from um, both regions to complete that response 
protocol in a panel setting each year. And that gives time to um, adapt and refine a unit each year. Um, conversely, we find that large teams with a stable core are very successful. So um, Amanda's team is a good illustration of that. Um, she and her administration have been the stable core for their team. As she mentioned, they rotate teachers into the Perfect Arts Integration Project, and that seems to um, maintain Amanda as the stable core, who is very familiar with the process and the unit, um, and positions her as a person that can share some of the curricular principles um, with the team. Another particularly interesting situation where larger teams work is when the large team selects a big idea. So as you may be aware of by now, the Perpich um, curricular model centers on understanding by design and backward planning, um, which is conceived by uh, McTy and Wiggins, which centers around thinking about a large idea. So one school in particular had a team of eight teachers and chose the, the larger idea of community. Um, they live in a very small rural town and wanted to um, explore their community in depth. And so what they did was form small, stable sub-teams that were then able to um, select pieces of community. So they selected geography, culture, people, um, and an interesting place where they um, were able to interview elders in a local community. Um, so those are, those are some sustainable organizational configurations that we have seen as evidence that um, those teachers report that they are very confident that they can sustain moving forward. When we talk about accommodating schedules and geography, we find that teams thrive when they're able to encounter their unit partners throughout the day. So some things that um, they describe to us as being very helpful is having proximate classroom locations. They may have overlapping or common planning, alternate planning periods for co-teaching, um, a common lunch period, or joint membership on other school committees. Um, in cases where there is availability and flexibility, um, as Amanda described, we have spoken with several teachers who have um, been granted extra planning or arts and arts integration coordination time um, in their schedules so that they're able to support the initiative in a further um, manner. We also have spoke to several schools about what they call legacy purchasing or strategic planning. So as you know, there is some funding that comes along with um, participation in this project. And um, as formal participation ends, um, Teachers are already thinking intentionally, intentionally about how they plan to sustain the unit when that funding may no longer be available. So one of the major pieces that we've seen is teachers thinking ahead and planning, um, using, planning to purchase non-consumable materials. So some examples of those, um, we've seen mass manipulatives that are um, magnets that are used to create 3D, 3D shapes. Um, those manipulatives were then able to be used in all sections of every um, grade level and will last until they're um, no longer. Also, class sets of books and digital cameras are examples of things that were purchased um, in order to think for the long term. Um, some other um, teachers simply plan units that involve minimal operational costs, so they put the bulk of their effort into using the support offered by Perfect staff and the coaching offered by them to plan units that they feel will already um, involve minimal cost. Um, another major point is incorporation into larger initiatives, which you did hear about from both Justin and Amanda. Um, if for any reason um, the arts integration project can be incorporated into larger initiatives, we find that it's much more likely to be able to be sustained. So they actually already shared this first example with you. Um, when the arts are added to something like STEM so that it becomes STEAM is one example. Um, um, this is a more general 
incorporation, but when the arts integration project works is seen in the overall school as good curriculum development that, that is integral to school the school improvement plan. So we have seen um, some units devoted to specific pieces of the school improvement plan, such as building community um, and incorporating state, state standards that um, teachers have not um, had success incorporating in the past. Um, another portion is when the arts integration team is invited to, dev to do professional development workshops for the entire school. So they are able to serve as experts and professionals who are now sharing the things that they've learned with the rest of the school. Um, so in closing, those are just a few things that we've noticed in our research about how schools are actively and intentionally planning to sustain their work in arts integration once the, um, their formal participation has finished. Um, we are encouraged um, by what these teaching teams are telling us in terms of um, work with their administrators and principals. Um, I think you can see that they are, um, each of the four things that I shared with you um, have varying levels of necessary participation and um, flexibility from the school principals and administration. And um, I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have. I also wanted to note that my, um, my team, it's myself, um, my colleagues Hillary, Ashley, and Summer may contact you sometime during the semester just to have a brief um, phone conversation to see what you are doing at your school um, in terms of arts integration. So I look forward to your questions, and I look forward to speaking with you a little later on in the semester. Thanks for your time. Allison, thank you so much. And uh, it's great to have your, uh, your thoughtful eye on our work and your evaluative information. What we'd like to do now is open up the conversation for questions and answers from our um, guest principal. And uh, there's just so much information you've given us about enabling conditions for arts integration. And uh, we hope some of those uh, really connect with folks in their own thinking about their site. I'm going to give them the option. So once again, um, folks, if you um, would like to pose a question orally, uh, let us know by raising your hand. Otherwise, go ahead and type in the chat window. We'll be monitoring that. Uh, Byron may have a few stimulating questions here himself. Alyssa, we saw a, uh, uh, an example of visual arts uh, integration today. Uh, what have you noticed about the balance of arts across the, uh, the network activity in arts integration? Sure. Um, I think we've seen um, a lean toward visual arts. Um, we've seen lots and lots of units in music education as well. Um, in many cases, we actually see units that are across several arts areas and also incorporate another uh, standard from ELA or from math. Um, we actually have one school where their, um, the Phi Ed teacher um, works with a, a dance standard. And then they also have a visual art teacher working on an art standard and the music teacher um, in combination with the fourth grade um, team. And they are thinking about culture in relation to um, Native American culture and students' own culture. So they're able to integrate across multiple art um, areas quite successfully. Uh, looking ahead, we're, we're happy to have you working with us uh, at least for a couple of years now uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, are there questions that you have that you're curious about arts integration as you, you work in the, in the network? I know your own work is uh, uh, about teaching in, in rural schools. Uh, what connections mm -hmm. do you see for your, your own research and uh, interests? So one of the other things that I study is um, equitable arts education. So are students in rural and urban areas that have historically been under-resourced, are they also um, getting access to quality arts education 
And I think one of the things that um, my team is very interested in this year, um, obviously in these schools that are participating, they've all um, prioritized having a licensed arts specialist. So we know that arts are important to the schools that have opted to participate. I think one of the things that we're um, just starting to dig into um, is something that I think is very important to all schools right now, which is thinking about which standards are being addressed across content areas and also thinking about how those standards are unpacked. We know that um, professional development, even outside the arts, is centering on unpacking standards and really um, digging into those in a meaningful way. So when we start to think about, um, for example, several teachers have expressed to us that um, this was an opportunity for them to engage standards such as um, one of the social studies standards about Native American culture, that they were unsure about how to approach that standard. So as, um, as we study this, especially this year, we're working to um, really tally each of the standards that are being used and how they're being used to see how teachers are picking up different pieces that may maybe um, were not at the forefront before. So um, there are several um, community building, um, respect building, uh, different standards like that or priorities even that are in the school improvement plans that, that we're really interested to see how the arts integration project engages those differently than they might be other, they might be engaged otherwise. Very good. Awesome. Thank you so much uh, for uh, for offering your insights.